Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love or want to get into. Today we will be talking about 24, Season 5. By the time the events start in Day 4, it's been 18 months since the events of Day 3. Jack has moved on with his life and moved to Washington under the employ of Secretary of Defense James Heller and his daughter, Audrey Rains, who Jack is now dating. Jack and company arrive at CTULA for financial matters. Habib Marwan has been planning his attack on America for the last two years and proceeds to attack as the hour starts. The first wave of these attacks involve James Heller and Audrey Rains as they are kidnapped and sentenced to a public execution. This, of course, is Jack's call to action, and for the next six hours, he is in hot pursuit trying to find James Heller and Audrey. As the threats increase and the process of information becomes more and more stagnant due to the loss of personnel or because of a mole in CTU, this allows old characters to come back, such as Tony Almeida and Michelle Dessler. Jack tries to help Tony get his life back together as the day's events of day three nearly set Tony to prison for taking matters into his own hands. When the director of CTU has to step down due to her daughter committing suicide, Michelle comes in as a replacement, which brings together the previously married couple to come to terms with one another. On the 17th hour, things get real. When Habib attacks Air Force One and shoots it down, incapacitating the president, leaving him critically injured. A reluctant Vice President Charles Logan is sworn in as acting president. President Logan, in the remaining hours, tries to understand the dire threat as Jack and company follow the breadcrumbs that get worse and worse, making Logan have to cover up Jack's actions, which is something he does not want to do. So thusly, in comes David Palmer to help sail through the rough waters. As the threat is unraveled, this leads Jack down a dangerous rabbit hole that reveals a member of the Chinese consulate to be a part of Habib's sleeper cell. Where David and Jack need this member of the consulate for questioning, the consul wants to go through proper channels, which could take too long. David authorizes an illegal apprehension of the member where things get complicated. The member is wounded badly, and the consul is killed by friendly fire, bringing about Chang to investigate the matter. Jack trades lives with Audrey's husband, who was hurt earlier in the day when Paul tries to save Jack's life and the Chinese council member, as there is only one surgeon at CTU headquarters. This leads to Audrey's husband dying and Lee's condition unknown for the time being. Mandy, a character appearing in day one and day three, reprises her role, taking Tony hostage and nearly kills him through said hostage situation. Mandy finally gives Habib's location, and Jack engages in a firefight with Habib, to which he throws himself off the ledge of a parking garage. The threat Habib imposed is resolved, with all of his attacks seen to fruition, but not at the capacity he intended. Chang's investigation leads him to Jack, who would have for the most part handed himself over accordingly. That's until Logan's cabinet member, Walt Cummings, suggests an ulterior method to Jack's well-being as to say something may happen to him in transit. When word of this reaches Jack, Tony, Michelle, and Chloe help fake his death so that Jack can live his life without endangering anyone else. Jack says his final goodbyes and walks off into the sunset. For those of you who want to know how this season is on the level, it is excellent. And that is the highest rating I can give. Everything in this season is at its peak. The golden achievement of 24 to give us excellent performances, action, intrigue, and suspense. Jack Bauer is a force to be reckoned with and everyone just lives in his world. There are at least five or six bad guys in this show and each one of them are as memorable as the last. This season isn't devoid of action any more than it's drama between people and the protocols they have to put in place when things go wrong. Do not skip this season. This Emmy Award winning season hit its height by dialing the tension, the conflict, and the stakes to 11. Friends, families, co-workers, and bosses high in the ranks are all affected by this event. So bad, where season 4 is sought to bring in our characters one by one to stop the threat Habib Marwan was imposing, this season does the opposite. Many characters are killed off this season by circumstance wrapped in a story that forces you to be a part of it as they reveal through each episode why all of this is happening. By the time we get to the end of it all, the reveals are just absolutely personal for Jack, 
but not just to him, even everyone else. Jack Bauer is in hiding, and for the most part, everyone close to him thinks he's dead after the events of Season 4. The only people who know he's alive is David Palmer, Michelle Dessler, Tony Omeda, and Chloe O'Brien. When David Palmer is killed off in the first 10 minutes, you are either ready to turn off the episode, never to watch the show again, or you are glued to your seat wondering what all of this means. And I, for one, wondered what the hell the writers were thinking for the sake of quality television. It gets worse when things don't stop there. Michelle is immediately killed off, with Tony and critical condition, leaving the fate throughout the season if he's going to make it or not. The first episode sets the bar high and just keeps the tension up. This leaves Chloe O'Brien in the will she or will she not die in the mix. Then CTU finds out who is responsible for David Palmer's murder, and by extension, Tony and Michelle. It's Jack Bauer, which alerts everyone who thought he was dead. Bill Buchanan, introduced in the latter half of season four, is director of CTU, along with Edgar Stiles as the lovable intelligence analyst and Curtis Manning as director of field operations. CTU worked closely with President Logan, sworn in after the events of season four, sealing the deal with the Russians to sign a peace agreement. Only after David Palmer's assassination, this puts a damper on things, where CTU believes Charles Logan could be targeted as well. Despite this possible fact, President President Logan finds it unnecessary to postpone anything as Russian president is on his way for the nationalized television event. On the family side of things, we follow Charles Logan's wife, Martha Logan, who has some stake in the day's events, believing David Palmer had contacted her to warn her of today. While this doesn't last all season, we are introduced to her, and it's something of an iconic appearance quite literally a scene stealer throughout the entire day. The terrorists involved are connected to the treaty about to happen with both presidents ready to sign the agreement, which leads to a bigger problem of the Russian separatists trying to get it from being signed by overtaking an entire airport and then changing it into Syntax nerf gas throughout the day. Needless to say, everything is connected in this explosive, amazing, and very chaotic bad day. The death count is considerably high this season. While David is a shock, the rest are big WTF moments that further the plot along despite your disdain on for how they go out. Michelle Dessler, who has been a character in the show since season two, goes out rather inconsequentially. Tony is in critical condition and throughout the season slowly comes to while trying to get revenge for Michelle's death, only for his revenge to backfire when Jack's former colleague, Christopher Henderson, ends up killing him. Chloe makes it throughout the season, but her friend Edgar Stiles doesn't. While CTU gets hit by Syntox nerve gas, which is an upsetting death to all who loved his character. Lynn McGill, played by Sean Astin, comes in creating some excellent tension and drama in CTU, but like the old faces coming back, the new ones don't stick around either, and he dies making a sacrifice, helping personnel in CTU to live another day. I will say, despite all the key characters dying, the supporting characters are promoted, such as Aaron Pierce, a fan favorite of mine, and Wayne Palmer, further the plotting. This was the season where I attended the season premiere just after the NFL playoff game. I spent the last few months trying to catch up to season 5 due to come out at the time during 2006. The excitement that ran through me could have transferred into electricity and lit up the entire town. When I finally saw the premiere, I was one of the 17 million people to tune in to watch all of my favorite characters die. Instead of losing interest, I tuned in the next week and then the next week and the one after that just to find out what the hell was going on this season. When I tell you there isn't a dull moment in this season? There really isn't. The plot is thick with motives and agendas known and even unknown. If you weren't already enticed by the first four seasons, the fifth will have no problem pulling out all the stops and take you along for the ride. Jack Bauer has always been a character. When brought into a situation, there was always an interesting angle that kept him involved that never had a doubt throughout the story he needed to be there. This is the first time the writers ever teased the possibility that Jack could be involved for a small period of time after getting involved. Jack is ready to bow out as he is ready to get back to where he needs to be. After all, there were consequences to Jack's actions for faking his death, and his daughter is not aware that he's alive. I really loved this aspect in the story where Jack isn't just getting involved blindly. President Charles Logan shares the same amount of screen time as Jack Bauer does, and his gripes and fears over the conflicts that continue on and on throughout this day overwhelm him to the highest degree, and this includes his wife Martha, who exhibits a lot of mental illness 
much to his dismay. So when Charles is asking for Jack's help, it kind of makes sense that Jack still needs to be involved. Little do we know how the entire day will play out, and when it does, there is a twist upon another twist, and I absolutely love the way this whole season was executed. Jack uncovers so much in one day. He finds out who killed David, thwarts an airport hostage situation by Russian terrorists, which is well worthy of your nails being bitten down to the quick. Then Jack finds out who provided the Russians with nerve gas, which is Walt Cummings, the president's chief of staff. Walt confesses to President Logan about his plan while Jack is hot on Walt's trail. Around this time, Martha is with 100% certainty that David Palmer tried to warn her about these attacks and that it involved Charles. In that meantime, time, the Russians begin their attack on America due to their politics conflicting with ours. I cannot express enough how great the action is coupled with political intrigue. The writers, the producers, the camera work all just worked out so well that it's amazing to me that they created an effective storytelling that lasted 24 episodes. Even when the threats of explosions and uncovering killers take a back seat, you are still glued to the twists and turns the story provides. At this point, much like episode 17 of season 4, the end of episode 16 leading into 17 provides an unthinkable twist that this season was leading towards, revealing that President Charles Logan is the main reason of this conspiracy. Conspiracy. The following episodes leading to the season finale has some of the rawest conflicts I have ever seen, forcing us to watch some uncomfortable situations, awkward moments forced to play out as people find out Charles' involvement, conspiracies unfolding, and desperate situations bringing to question if they will work out or not. Season 5 ends on a cliffhanger as the Chinese catch up to Jack and take him prisoner ending day five on the highest note possible. Season five is an excellent, taut, and action-packed season that is one of my favorites. Iconic characters with some iconic moments, and how it's done is absolutely brilliant and probably the best send-off to one of my most beloved characters to come to national television. In the end, guys and gals, this is a season that reaches its height with the promise of more to come your way. I don't need to consistently say it because you obviously know how I feel, I highly recommend this season. All right, guys and gals, have you seen 24 season five or any of the seasons before it? Or are you interested in seeing it? Let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, check out the description box. With all that said, I'll see you all next time.